Hello everyone and welcome to episode 19 of the Adult Game Maker course. In this episode we're diving into the implementation of functionalities for our two remaining buildings. Brace yourselves because these buildings compact with effects more intricate than anything we've explored in this series so far. I will also teach you a few intermediate coding techniques that will prove invaluable when crafting complex effects for your own projects. But before we begin I want to give a special shout out to two incredible individuals. First up, Diamond Gem is a fellow creator who has recently embarked on his own tutorial series series for Isle Game Maker, I recommend you to check out his insightful content. Secondly, a massive shout out to Fragile Frenzy, who is also a patron of mine, so that obviously makes him a huge boss. And he's created a tutorial on timers in Isle Game Maker, which you won't want to miss. Links to both creators and their videos are in the description below, so show them some love, they truly deserve it. Now with that said, let's begin implementing our effects. So here's the plan for our game that we have created in episode 16 and I have changed it a little bit so it's more balanced and interesting. The first effects we will be implementing in this video are the passive effects for mint facilities. So we will need to implement an effect where each mint facility increases all building production by 1% but also makes each building cheaper by 0.5% up to a maximum of 50%. Now I have an optional challenge for you and that is to attempt to implement the first passive effect that is coin ownership yourself. I'm only giving you the first one since the second effect which makes buildings cheaper is more complicated but if you really want to you can attempt that as well. So pause the video and give this challenge your best shot. Alright, welcome back, hopefully you gave it a go and if you couldn't figure it out, no worries, after all we are stepping out of our comfort zone in this episode. I'll now guide you through the process of implementing these effects myself, so let's get to it. Alright, so I'm in Notepad++ now and the very first thing I'll do before we even implement anything is temporarily increase our coin button yield by a lot, like to 1 trillion, so that we can test the effects we are going to implement very easily. Now if you attempted the optional challenge I gave you, you might have thought that, oh well let me just add a pattern passive effect to my building and you'd be halfway right but buildings that game maker have a special hidden effect and that is that they multiply each of their effects by their amount and we do not want this so instead what we are going to do is we are going to create an upgrade which is hidden from the player but which we also own which will do the logic for us so let's create a new upgrade and give it a thing key of mf passive effects Right, so MF stands for Mint Facilities, and we are going to create a passive effect block, which will contain the passive effects for our building. Now we will first implement the first effect, which is Coin Ownership, so let's just quickly comment that out so we don't get confused in the future. So below this will be Coin Ownership Effect code. Right? But before we add the code for that, let's not forget to make this upgrade always hidden and have it owned from the start. Okay, now that we did that, we can begin implementing our code. So the coin ownership effect is actually pretty simple. All we need to do is to multiply the yield of all buildings in our game by 1 plus 0 0.01 times the amount of mint facilities that we own. Let's also not forget to add an end to the end of the passive effect block to properly close it. Let's now just quickly explain how this code works. So since we are working with percentages, this one here stands for 100% and this 0.01 stands for 1%. So if you notice, we are adding an extra 1% to 100% for each mint facility that we own. So this means that we are technically multiplying our building's yield by, for example, 110% if we own 10 mint facilities. And this is because if you only multiply Applied yield of your buildings by 10%, you would actually be decreasing it instead of increasing it. Alright, so now with that effect implemented, let's move on to the second one, which is the inflation effect. With this effect, we will need to use an if statement. And I will explain what the code does after I finish writing it, so bear with me. So just do if minus 0.005 times mint facilities is greater than 0.5, you will multiply the cost of all the buildings in our game by that condition which we set. So 1 minus 0 0.005 times mint facilities. Otherwise, multiply the cost of buildings only by 0 0.5. There we go. And of course, don't forget to add an end to end the if statement block. All right, so what does this code actually do? Well, once again, we are working with percentages. So one stands for 100%, 0.005 is 0.5%, and 0.5 is just 50%. Now, notice here that in this expression which we've created, you decrease the 100% or the one here by 0.5% for each mint facility that you own. Now, since we want to cap this out at a maximum of 50%, we need to check if the value of this expression is greater than 0.5. 
5, so 50%. Now, if it is, that means we have not reached our cap yet, and we can multiply the cost of our buildings by this expression. If it is lower than 0.5, however, that means we did reach our cap, and we'll just multiply the cost of our buildings by a flat 50%, or 0.5, which is basically just dividing it by 2. Alright, so hopefully that made sense, but there is one more thing I forgot, and that is to add an on-tick effect to our mint facilities. So let's just quickly make them yield 50 coins. So yield 50 coins. There we go. Let's also give the mint facilities a temporary cost of something like 300 coins so that we can test it properly. Now all that we have to do is just drag and drop our saved text file into our file garden library. Hit replace. And now when we copy link and then paste it instead of our paste bin code here, we should see our changes. There we go. It costs 300 coins and now we can fully test it. All right. So I wiped my save. Let's get a few trillion coins. Now let's buy a few buildings so that we can see the cost reduction in action. Now, after we buy a mint facility, the price of all buildings, including the mint facilities themselves, will be reduced. So let's see. All right. And we can see that the cost is indeed decreasing. And now let's test if it's actually capped. So once we hit a hundred mint facilities, it should be at 50%. So let's go to 100, right? And after this point, cost of buildings should no longer reduce. And we can see that it does work very nicely. Okay, now let's move on to implementing the effects for our coin conglomerates. All right, so I'm back in the plan of my game and the plan for coin conglomerates is as follows. They will produce 250 coins and they will have a passive called scam employees where each con artist increases all building production by 0.5% and they will have another passive called triangular link where if the amount of coin conglomerates is a multiple of 3 their production gets multiplied by 3 as well and this applies to scam employees as well. Now implementing these effects is going to be a little more difficult than what we did with the mint facilities but overall it's very very exciting stuff so let's get right to it. Alright, so I'm back in Notepad++ and let's first implement the very basics of our building plan. So the first thing we need to do is to have an optic effect on the coin conglomerate building. They will yield us 250 coins per second. Next up, let's give them a temporary cost of the classic 300 coins, which we will change once we will start balancing the game. Now we will need to do the same thing as with mint facilities and that is to create an upgrade which is owned and hidden from the start of the game, which will calculate all of the necessary logic for us. So let's create a new upgrade and call it something like CG passive effects, right? So coin conglomerates passive effect. And as with the first passive effects upgrade which we made, let's comment out the sections of our code. First up, we'll be implementing the triangular link because it's the simpler effect of the two to implement. And before we continue, let's add always hidden as well as owned to the upgrade so we don't forget later. Now with that done, let's begin implementing the, the triangular link effect. So first let's create a passive effect block and let's add a preemptive end at the end of the effect block to close it so that we don't forget later. And let's now begin writing our code. So first let's invent this comment and now let's add a one line if statement which checks if coin conglomerates divided by three returns a reminder of zero. And if it does, it will multiply the yield of our coin conglomerates by three. Now we once again use the modular operator in a similar fashion like we did with the coin trees. And if you aren't quite sure what the modular operator actually does, or if it's, you know, confusing for you, think about it like this. When you divide a number, any kind of number at all, by three and it has no remainder at all, that means it is divisible by three. And when it is divisible by three, that means it's a multiple of three. Hopefully that makes sense. And let's now move on to implementing the second effect. First, let's write a comment, which says that the code below will be for the scam employees effect. And I forgot to add an effect here. Okay, and I will once again explain what the code I'm about to write does after I finish writing it. So, you know, bear with me for a moment. So if coin conglomerates is greater than zero and coin conglomerates modulo three so divided by three returns a remainder of not zero so it's different than zero we will multiply the yield of all buildings in our game by one plus 0 0.005 times the amount of coin artists we own and then we add an else if again if coin conglomerates are greater than zero but this time 
coin conglomerates are divisible by three as well, then we will multiply the yield of all our buildings by one plus 0 0.005 times con artists times three. And of course, we can't forget an end. All right, phew, that's quite a few lines of code, but before I begin explaining it, I have another optional challenge for you, and that is to actually try and figure out yourself what this code exactly does and why it works. So pause the video, analyze it, and basically just try to deduce why it's written like this. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you gave that challenge a go. I will now try my best to explain in detail what the code does. So first, the passive effect is called and the program asks a question. Is the amount of coin conglomerates greater than zero? And is the amount of coin conglomerates not a multiple of three? Hence the exclamation mark equals sign. If this if statement evaluates the true, that means triangular link is not active. And we should multiply the yield of our buildings only by plus 0.5% per con artist owned. Okay, that's cool and all, but what if the if statement evaluates to false? Well, then it asks another question. Is the amount of coin conglomerates greater than zero? And is the amount of coin conglomerates a multiple of three? If this if statement evaluates to true, that means that triangular link is active and we should multiply the yield of buildings by 1.5%, so basically a three times boost per con artist owned. And if this statement evaluates to false as well, well, it just skips to the end. Now you might be asking, well, why do we use an else if? Why not just use an else? Well, in this case, we need to ask if the player owns any coin conglomerates at all. Because if we don't and only just use an else, this effect right here would activate even if we don't own any coin conglomerates at all. Notice that this upgrade is essentially useless or, or basically just doesn't do anything if we don't own any coin conglomerates, which is exactly what we want. All right, hopefully that explanation made things a lot clearer and understandable, but don't feel bad if you still feel confused about this code. I promise you that after you get a lot more practice and overall more experience these more complicated things will start to click into place all right now all that's left to be done is to once again drag and drop our updated version into our file garden library hit replace once again and now when we hit refresh on our game yep there we go our coin conglomerates now have a cost and they work exactly as we'd expect them to work. Now, I won't go into further testing because I have tested the building extensively off camera and the video is already getting pretty long. So you will just have to trust me that it actually works. One more thing I will do is add descriptions as well and just enhance the already existing descriptions. So let me just cut to the future real quick. And there we go. The descriptions for every single building has been implemented and improved as you can see. And this is really, really exciting because I would say that our game is pretty much possibly even two thirds done. Now, all of the code that I changed off camera is nothing really new. We have learned everything in the text effects video and the code that I use to create these descriptions is also linked in the description. So you can just copy and paste it there if you want. All right, and with that said, that should be the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And I really hope you found this tutorial useful. If you really enjoy what I do here, feel free to check out my patreon for only two dollars a month your name can be included in the outro of my videos the next episode in this series will be really really exciting because we will be implementing dynamic building production info inside of our descriptions which is something a lot of people have asked me to make a tutorial on so stay tuned for that but once again thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one